What's going on everybody? Liam O'Reilly, Vermont Economic Realtor. I hope you're doing well. In yesterday's video, I talked about how in my opinion and in, in other people's opinions as well, that purchasing a primary residence is not an investment. It's, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad purchase, but I guess for my def definition of an investment, it's, it's not an investment. But one thing it does do is it gives you control over your housing. When you purchase a property, you know, you have, you have most people opt for some sort of fixed rate loan, whether that be a 30 year fixed rate loan or a five year uh, adjustable rate where your rate is fixed for five years and then adjust after that, or you know, potentially a 10-year fixed rate loan, something along those lines. If you're going with a fixed rate, it's usually for at least some, if you're going for an adjustable rate, excuse me, it's usually for some extended period of time. And then uh, the most common mortgage that, that you hear, when you hear the mortgage rate, that term, they're talking about the 30-year fixed rate term, 30-year fixed rate loan, what, what that interest rate is. So most people are, they have a fixed monthly payment if they're getting a mortgage rate obviously if you pay cash your your expenses are just the taxes and, and insurance and utilities um but if you're a renter you you don't have that luxury you don't have the luxury of of a fixed payment uh that's going to remain the same for for an extended period of time your landlord can up the rent at, at the end of your lease renewal whether that be at at the end of one year or one year or two years or if you're on a month-to-month -month lease you're you're kind of at at the whim of your landlord, you know, they can, they can really increase it on, on a monthly basis, which, you know, can, can be problematic from, for, for a lot of tenants. So I'm going to leave an article in the description for you folks. The article is titled renters prison, how a merciless market of unchecked rent hikes traps Vermont tenants. And I thought this article does a great job at showing the different struggles of both tenants and landlords who are, um, you know, in this environment of rent increases that we've experienced over the over the past few years, you know, it's pretty obvious with with tenants that when you increase rents um, significantly, the the tenant might not be able to afford that rent, or it takes out a good chunk of their overall monthly income. But when, when you when you hear the the landlord's perspective, I mean, their costs have gone up as well. Whether that be costs uh, from from their housing through property tax increases, increased maintenance costs through both labor and materials, um, or you know if they're a new purchaser purchasing the property at a higher rate, they need to increase rents to market rates in order to pay pay the debt that they've taken out on the property if if they got a loan, um, as well as as well as those increased maintenance costs and maybe they're they're fixing things up all, all you know that all factors into to the rent aspect of it. And some landlords have other expenses outside of housing that that are unexpected, and and they need to uh, bring rents up to up to market rate. And when market rate is increasing rapidly, um, you know it's it, it makes it difficult on tenants. But you know, in my opinion, the the article, and you guys can read it and let me know what you guys think of the article. But I think the article was really in favor of rent control here in Vermont, uh, as opposed to bringing more housing to the area, which is, I've talked about it many times in this channel. We need more housing. We need more affordable housing. We need more, we need more units. We need more units for, for the people who, for, for renters, for, uh, first time home buyers, especially in that, you know, let's say three to $500,000 range. It's just that that's in my opinion, where, where I see the shortages. And I think, you know, the, the real solution here in Vermont is adjusting zoning and, and getting enticing, investors to come in and, and invest in properties around Chittenden County through either, you know, tax tax breaks or, or really just doing doing whatever we can to get more housing for people people in need. You know, when you when when you hear about rent control, it it sounds like a good idea, but a lot of people, you know, don't don't they overlook the unintended consequences, just as the zoning restrictions around here in in Vermont that are meant to make keep Vermont local keep Vermont small keep it keep it green that the you know the unintended consequences of that are the 
lack of housing that we're experiencing, the housing shortages. Um, and, and, you know, I know that's not the intent of, of people who, who are enjoying Vermont and are enjoying the, you know, the housing and the, the place that they live, their community, but it, it is, it is an effect that, that the zoning is having. So just as the, that has unintended consequences, rent increases have, or rent control has unintended consequences. And I, I have another article I'm going to leave in the description by, by Vo that does a good job at explaining it. And I think this paragraph here, so they're talking about other cities that currently have rent control, like New York City, San Francisco, um, cities that have rent control in place and the issues that, that they're facing. And it says right here, it's clear that these areas share something else in common. They have high demand labor markets, superstar cities, where the rising cost of housing is largely due to the locality's reluctance to allow more housing to be built, even as demand has shot through the roof, right? It's really a supply problem that is causing the, that is causing rents to increase. Um, and when you, you know, when you increase, when you impose rent control on people, there's, there's unintended consequences. And, and let's take a look at what some of those unintended consequences are. You know, I think one of the biggest ones here is right here, talking about Berlin, where in Berlin, you know, they have rent control, but what landlords have started to do is charge, ask their tenants upon signing the lease to purchase uh, the kitchen equipment and TV and furniture or ask for that extra money up front so that the landlord can purchase it for, for when they uh, move in. I, I, in my, it doesn't sound like these tenants are getting ownership of the kitchen equipment, but um, you know it says right here that they're asking 25,000 euros, uh, $28,000, I think that's less now, now that the dollar is stronger, but um, on a on a 930 euro per month rent. So, you know, that, that doesn't really help the affordability issue. And you guys can take a look at this article for yourself. And, and I think it does a good job at, at summarizing some different aspects of rent control and sh sharing the pros and the cons. And, you know, in, in my opinion, the, the cons are, I outweigh the pros. I mean, the pros are that it helps current tenants, people who are currently renting right now. It, it helps those people maintain their rent and not and not get pushed out of where they're living, which is great. You know, that is great for those people. But after those people do move out, it doesn't really help future tenants. You know, when when you can't when landlords can't make their choice based on the the highest dollar amount, you know, when they when if you have a really nice unit and you list it for you want to list it for a high price and get a higher quality tenant, you know, if you're forced to list it for a lower price, you're going to, to discriminate based on other factors, as opposed to people who want to pay that price. You're going to discriminate, you know, based on, based on the, the applicant's financial position. If you have somebody who is not in a great financial position, uh, who's competing with people who are in an excellent financial position because of, because rent is controlled and everyone's competing on the same price, you know, landlords are going to naturally choose the the tenants who are in a better financial position and that's what we see in these cities who are who have rent control and, and they say that in in this article um, that it it over time rent control tends to benefit the wealthier person which is not which is not the goal of the lawmakers and, and people who are advocating for rent control and so coming coming back full circle here point that I'm trying to make, and I would recommend reading these articles. I think they're very good insights into the rental situation around here in Vermont. And I think um, the situation that a lot of other markets across the country are experiencing, you know, the solution is really to adjust zoning and, and allow more housing to be built so that we can have, uh, you know, a, a free market that it, that allows that regulates prices naturally and uh, keeps things affordable, you know, as opposed to as opposed to restricting supply because you don't want certain types of housing to be built in certain areas. Um, anyway, let let me know what you guys think. Uh, all my contact information is listed below. If you're looking to purchase or sell a property here in Vermont, please reach out to me directly. Phone, 
uh, call, text, or email are all great ways to reach me. Let me know what you think about this video. Uh, am I right about rent control, wrong about rent control? Leave a comment in the description uh, or feel free to reach out to me directly. I'm happy to happy to talk to you outside of YouTube as well. Liam Morale, Vermont Economic Realtor. Happy New Year, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video.